Another OTS championship, and this time we actually are seeing Black Wings and Monarchs be scary threats. Don't be like the 30% of you that have not smashed the of living crap out of that subscribe button. Smash it so you guys don't miss out more OS content. Now this is a relatively small OTS championship for what it is, but I wanted to cover this because we have Black Wings and monarchs in the top cut for this i actually kid you not that that's a thing that actually happened here so out of this event um we have two cash jira two by steel branded despia being your highest represented decks per se here now everything else that you are going to hear me read off here is going to be one of so we had one sprite one flunder one rikas on avalon one eldritch one labyrinth one purely a Pendulum Draco Slayer, a Math Mech Adding Nister, a Hero, a Blackwing, a Monarch and a and there were four others that they didn't list here. But when you think about how diverse this metagame is, you hear all of those particular names, most people are familiar with those decks. A lot of people will tell you that, yeah, there's a lot of different power levels behind those, but those are a lot of decks that either have been successful, continue to be some sort of successful, or there's some sort of rogue strategy out here that you're like, oh, well, yeah, that, that makes sense. So remember, even though this is a very small event, that's still, <sighs> what, 16, 18 different, 18 different decks that you have to be worried about walking in the room, and minus your, yourself, 17 at that point, that's a lot of diversity that you really got to consider out here. So when you start looking at the top cut here and you see, you know, bridging over the gap here, um, it really does impressively show here how good the metagame actually looks. So, I mean, once again, for Rogue to kind of climb over the mountain at some of these points, I think that's actually really, really cool. All right, we're going to pass on over to the top deck. Winning the event here was actually none other than Basic Sprite. None of that runic stuff, none of that extra, like, you know, cake. This is the basic of basic here when it comes to this deck. Uh, we are playing the one copy Viper here. We are playing a Bi-Steel package in here, which I think is fine. Um, the Bi-Steel package in a smaller um, event like this is gonna be okay. Especially like if you're gonna be climbing over Rogue, it, it can make sense. And then of course you have the Triple Book of Eclipse in here. That way, in case you do run into a cash tier player. Um, I mean, honestly, Book of Eclipse's viability as a you know card to clean up some other good stuff, actually, it, it makes a lot of sense out here. So I actually like that. Downard Zeus into the stack side and the extra Magna Hut, and then we are citing the one thrust to toggle into the evenly matched. Evenly off a of thrust is one of the craziest things that really exist out here in this format and it is it is really no fun allowed next up here we have our black wing list wow the fact that black wings managed to get second place out here is fairly impressive um i do see that we are playing two of the trap card down here uh, what is it the black wing uh back or whatever it's called um, I do know there's a really cool interaction that this deck actually gets with that, which is really cool. I do I do think that we're not playing the FTK version. I did cover, what was it, an FTK version a little while back, and a lot of people were like, really? Like, yeah, it actually got the chance. There are a lot of things you can do with Black Wings. I know a lot of people don't really, like, explore this deck all that much, especially since this build was playing a Submorg package in it as well. You have a lot of good things going for you for this deck. So keep that in mind that in terms of Blackwing innovations, you have a lot of goodies that you can mess around with out here. So very, very good stuff at the end of the day. Um, next up here, we have our Monarch list, making top four out of this event. Now, this does not have an extra deck. This is gonna be your standard, ha ha, you're gonna lose to the field spell shenanigans. We all know that like this has been the strongest version of the deck for a very long time, all right? Like I, I'm sorry to like tell you that, but that's the thing that makes Monarchs an incredibly strong deck is just in terms of combo ability, you're you laugh at your opponent. You're you exist to drop a vanities on the field, look at your opponent and go, Well, you didn't have the good card to negate me. 
Sorry, Duelist. Um, but outside of that, I do like that we are also playing the Pendulum Monster in here as well. That's kind of been the new addition to this deck, is that Pendulum Monster gives this deck some draw power, and that draw power actually is kind of strengthened this deck. Who would have guessed that having one for one draw power for the Monarch deck would make all that difference? Well, you would have guessed it. When your entire deck ends up being a brick half of the time, not really much you can do. Next up here, we actually have our Despia deck. All right, so... In terms of Despia's power scaling, I think that the Dark Magician Dragoon variation has kind of ended up being the um, I, a stronger variation at this point in time. Um, you do need, honestly, I do think you need the uh, Dark Dragoon. It just makes this deck feel a lot better at the end of the day. And I'm not saying that, like, oh, boy, you need to go invest in a Dragoon. No, I, I just think it feels better. Uh, we are also playing the Raw Disciple in here. I've noticed the Gimmick Puppet um, just hasn't been all that crazy. But in more localized events, I feel like the Raw can be better because... You know, especially from the diversity that was present for this event, if you don't have the out, there's not going to be a lot you're going to be able to do to kind of, you know, be able to handle that. So that's one very big thing to consider here is, you know, the value that you're going to get from your card choices. So Andrew Goon's a lot better in a rogue environment for sure. Next up is our cash tier deck. Wow, cash tier was so bad it got top eight in this event. That feels really, really bad down here. Um, the first thing I will tell you is we are playing the Crossout Designators and we are playing the Lances. This is going to give you a lot of defensive options for you to get the chance to play the game. Yeah, who would have guessed that? I see that we're also playing the Dimension Shifters down here as well. Um, Shifter not being in the main deck has opened this deck up to an entire new world of good stuff. All right, The fact that you can now actually adjust your main deck and do the good stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we are playing Goliath in the extra deck as well. Do not... <laughs> actually, the fact that you're playing Pot of Prosperity with this gives you so many good options. Uh, aside in the one book of Eclipse so you can cross at it. Yeah, imagine your opponent goes to activate cross or activate the book, you cross it out, and you're just like, ah, play one of this while having the biggest, you know, grin on your face. Uh, it's going to be good. Next up is our Eldritch deck. Wow, Eldritch actually made it. This is the first Eldritch deck I've had the chance to cover. We are playing the Swamp King of Apophis trap card, an additional layer of negates. This deck is t uh, literally tricked out, man. Like 52 cards. And you have some of them, it's mistakes. Everything in here to not let your opponent have fun. That's what I like to see. Um, outside of that, the skill drain variation is going to be very strong. Your extra deck, I mean, it kind of matters to a little bit of a degree because we are main decking the super polys. Double super poly I think is fine. I figured you'd probably want to play a little bit more pot of extravagance in this deck, um, you know, to because you are toggling for a lot of draw power at this point, but I guess they opted to, to not push all that hard. So very, very interesting in terms of ratios for this. Good stuff. And next up here, we have Flanderies, main decking the grave of the uh, what, super ancient organism here. So I guess that this duelist was really worried about the fact that they were going to have to play against um, a lot of Cash Tira for this event. Does not look like that ended up being the case here. Now, we are main decking a Vanity's Fiend. I guess it's going to cover your bases here for a lot of the rest of the format here. Because, I mean, you go through all your normal summons, deploy the Fiend. What's your opponent supposed to do? Oh, you know, Book of Eclipse, Book of Moon answers it. That's kind of the problem right now I have with this. Um, we are main decking Double Feather Storm too. So as long as you can see those cards, you should get the chance to go into a fairly good position here. And I also see that we are playing Royal Decrees in the side deck and Starlight Road. Talk about going back in a time capsule here and just seeing the betterment of some very good old hilarious options here for this. So very happy to see that Flanderies actually got the chance to work here. And our last list here was actually a Despia deck that they wanted to choose to keep quiet. I don't know why uh, they chose not to share this, but that's overall fine for the end of the day. So that is your breakdown for the Bolivian OTS event so many cool moving pieces out here for Rogue. So many players are having fun right now. 
Yeah, I know the word fun and Yukio and competitive. That's something that you don't see all that often, but it is a good time to be a player out here. So what do you guys think about this event? Please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. And quite honestly, I look forward to reading the comments and uh, just seeing what you guys think. You guys have a good rest of your day. All right. Peace out. Patrons. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.